Want to make sure you never miss a new release from the official Creepypasta.com YouTube channel again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. Number one. It was the summer of 97. I was nine and scared of my own shadow. So this experience only furthered my fear of the world. My mum and I drove up from Revere MA to Bear Brook State Park in New Hampshire to camp. My dad was going to drive up the next morning to meet us because he had work. So, everything was going normal at the campsite. We set up the tent, built our fire, all was well. It was still daylight when we noticed that the lone, greasy-haired man in the campsite connected to ours was continually running and leaping onto a wooden post, then attempting to balance himself on one foot. He kept doing this, over and and over, and over. It was odd, but we just figured he was some lonely kook, and had a good laugh at his expense. My mum even thought he was trying out for the circus, maybe. Cut to night time. It would have been absolute darkness, if not for the campfire. My mum and I were sitting and roasting s'mores over the flames, when we heard footsteps approaching from the other campsite. Out of the pines, the lone man stumbled onto our sight. He was ghastly and ragged in the firelight. I could tell my mum was tense. She asked the stranger what he needed. Uh, hey, he mumbled. I need your help in my campsite. We waited, and he didn't go on. My mum asked what he needed help with. The filthy man said, I locked my keys in my van. I need you to come over and help me. He then looked at me and said, Don't worry, kid. You can stay here with your fire. I remember getting goosebumps at that. My mum said, I don't know how I can help you with your keys. You must have a spare hanger lying around somewhere, suggested the man. My mum told him she didn't. The ghoulish man wouldn't let up, though. Yeah, you must have a hanger lying around here somewhere. Maybe you dropped one on the ground near your tent. My mum adamantly told him she didn't have a hanger, and quickly added, My husband will be here soon though, maybe he can help you. He's a pretty strong guy. Yeah, alright, the creep slurred, and started to trudge away into the dark. But he turned his head and said, Well if you do find a hanger, come help me, I'll be here. And with that, the horrible man left. My mum and I barely slept that night. I felt her moving at every sound outside the tent. Looking back, my poor mother must have stayed up through the long night, worrying a butcher knife was going to slash through the tent wall. And so, morning eventually came, and when we stepped out of the tent, we immediately saw that the lone man and his camper van had gone. Later in the day, I heard my mum exclaim. I ran over to her and watched as she picked up something from the ground beside our tent. She held it between us, staring at it, not speaking. It was a metal hanger. Number two. Three years ago, my girlfriend and I decided to hike up near her parents' place in Oregon when we went to visit them for a week. We decided to bring camping gear with us and stay the night. I'd only been camping once before, and that was in the Boy Scouts, so it had been a long time. My girlfriend grew up camping, and knows her way around that area really well. So myself, her, and her parents' dog Bear, a huge Newfoundland lab mix, head up the trail. We saw a few people out, but they were mostly day hikers. People loved Bear, and kept stopping to pet him. A little after six, we made camp, set up our tent, and pulled out our food. We decided to buy big sub sandwiches, stuff for s'mores, chips, and a few tall boys of beer. I fired up a joint, and she pulled out her guitar after we finished eating. It was an amazing, relaxing night, and we started winding down, getting ready to head to bed. She was in the tent, getting dressed for bed, while I finished my smoke, and made sure the fire was out. 
Suddenly, Bear starts growling this low, menacing growl that I've never heard from him before. I pet him, and look around, figuring it's just an animal or something. We go to sleep, and in round one, I wake to my girlfriend shaking me. She looks terrified. I can hear Bear growling beside us, and she holds her finger up to her mouth, talking low. She tells me that she woke up to voices. I listen, and hear what sounds like two men talking. I hear something absolutely terrifying. One of them says to his friend, I'll take the girl, you get rid of the guy. I knew it was screwed. We had no weapons of any sort. My girlfriend unzips the tent, and Bear rockets out. I have never seen him move that fast in my life. I hear one of the guys yell, and Bear snarling and growling, and then running. My girlfriend takes the satellite phone her dad insisted she carry, and calls him up. He rings law enforcement, and we stay in the tent as instructed. Bear comes back, out of breath, with no sign of the guys, and we wait for the ranger. When the ranger shows up, they find no sign of the guys, save for truck tyre tracks and some cigarette butts. They gave us a ride back down to our car, and later that day, Bear got a very well-deserved steak. Number three. About five years ago, I went camping with three of my buddies, John, Bennett, and Kyle. We do this every year. It's kind of a bro trip to reconnect with each other. We were all fresh out of college and decided to go on our yearly camping trip in August. We're from Oregon and ended up camping in the woods there like we usually do, at the same spot. The first day was great. We set up our spot, explored the area, and by the time the sun was setting, we set up a campfire and made dinner. After a few too many beers and some s'mores, we decided to go to sleep. It was a perfect end to a perfect day. Our second day was basically the same thing. Hiking, food, one too many beers. But this night ended up being not so perfect. I remember watching a Mr. Nightmare video one time about some guys camping, and uh, my story is very similar. As we finished the rest of our beers, we were wrestling around with each other like guys do, and then John stopped messing around and froze. Everyone was confused, but John claimed he heard something nearby. I told him it was most likely a squirrel, and he said no, it most definitely wasn't. He was scaring me at this point, so I decided to resume the tackling session, and I took him down. We forgot about the whole thing until about ten minutes later. We were tired from wrestling and joking around, so we decided to put out the fire and head into the tent. As our only light source, besides our flashlights, went out, I heard a slight cackle. I assumed it was one of the boys, because we were all clearly a bit buzzed, so everything's funny. I wanted to see what was so funny, so I turned the flashlight directly onto Bennett's face. Bennett was white as a ghost. He looked at me and said, Did you guys hear that? The laughing, I said. And Cal said, That wasn't you. We were all shaken and decided to go into the tent. As we got into the tent, I pulled out an axe that I had used to cut wood. It was the only source of protection we had. I was on the very end of the tent, with Kyle and John in the middle, and Bennett on the other end. We were all silent, but I knew we were all wide awake after hearing that laughter. We weren't exactly at an actual campsite where there were other people around. We just walked into the woods, found an open spot, and set up camp there. We were about a mile from our car, with barely any cell signal, so I guess you could say we weren't exactly in the safest position if there was a crazy maniac running around. I got tired and dozed off. I have no idea how long I was sleeping before I heard laughter again. It's hard to describe, 
Other than it sounded menacing. I was frozen. I couldn't move. I didn't even try to look over to see if my buddies were awake. The axe was under my pillow. As I mustered up the strength to move to get it, I saw what looked like someone's finger pressed up against the tent, just circling around us. Someone was definitely outside, walking around our tent, laughing. When they got to the front part of the tent where the entrance was, they stopped. About five seconds of silence went by, before the person ferociously shook the tent and screamed. That's when I knew my buddies were awake, because Kyle screamed like a little girl, and after he screamed, whoever was behind the tent laughed and walked off. We laid there for the rest of the night, wide awake and sober. We didn't want to move out of the pure fear that whoever was out there was still there. When the sun came up, we packed up everything and walked back to our car. We still go camping every year, but now make sure we go to a legitimate camping site. And I'll bring a judge with me, and not just an axe. Whoever was outside our campsite could have just been a deranged homeless person, psychopath serial killer, meth head, or just an asshole playing a prank on us but I sure as hell won't camp in a rural place anymore. Number four. I love camping. Anytime my friends and I came home from college, we would load up our cooler with beer, grab some gear and screw around outside. Unfortunately, when I was actually at school, none of my sorority sisters or other friends ever wanted to go with me, so I would often suffer withdrawals from camping. One day, the weather was way too nice to waste, so I grabbed some of my gear, hopped in a car I borrowed from a buddy, and drove to a spot that was secluded, yet within safe distance to civilization, so that I could run and get help if needed. Camping creeps me out sometimes, but that creepy feeling is somewhat of a plus for me. It's the same reason that people read and listen to these stories. It's fun to be scared. So, I make a little camp and get a fire going. I hadn't brought all that much to eat, but I was enjoying myself, reading and looking around the area, that kind of thing. I got the feeling I was being watched, and I stopped dead in my tracks. I hear a twig crunch to my right. Then, I see a doe bolt from a hundred feet or so in front of me. I laughed at myself, and went back to camp with the armful of wood I had gathered. I kept freaking myself out, hearing sounds just outside the ring of light cast by the fire. I always get inside my head, so I shrugged it off and kept whittling at a stick I had been messing with. Around one, I decided to go into my tent and snuff out the lantern. I had been slamming beers in the most unladylike fashion and smoking cheap cigars. That's another reason I like camping. I can act however I want. So I passed out relatively quickly. At around two, I started hearing footsteps. They sound pretty light and sort of timid. I think to myself that it's a deer or other animal, most likely a raccoon, because I'd probably left some food out. I'm still on guard, though. About thirty minutes of sleeping with one eye open, I hear a rubbing noise, and the tent fabric is being pushed in a bit. I don't know how... I didn't ship my sleeping bag, but I just sat there paralysed with my K-bar in hand. I desperately wanted to thrust the knife through the tent fabric, but I was still holding out hope that it was some of my buddies from a frat joking with me. And then, as suddenly as it all began, it stopped. I was starting to feel slightly more secure, because daylight would be coming in about two or three hours and I sure as shit wasn't going to sleep. All of a sudden, at about four o'clock, I realised I should put my boots on, so that if anything did happen, I'd be ready. After having stayed up, and keeping alert a little while longer, my friend's car alarm goes blaring. I freak the fuck out, and run out of the tent. I got about two steps, 
before something grabs me around the mouth. I open my mouth to scream, but instead the person's pinky finger slips between my teeth. I've heard that people can perform superhuman feats when they have huge adrenaline rushes. In my case, I just clamped down. And there's no way to say this without it sounding ridiculous. But his finger popped off. He screamed and pulled his hand away with the missing digit falling to the ground. He took off running down the hill I was camping on, and I took off quick in the opposite direction. I must have looked ridiculous to the people whose house I ran to. A little sorority girl in a wife beater, boxers, and steel toe boots. I also had some blood that had oozed out of my lip, but not from the finger, but because I had also managed to take a pretty good chunk out of my own lip as well. I told them what happened. They called the cops, got me some real clothing, and the man at the house made me a whiskey and coke. When the cops got there, they checked it out, and when they came back, it was light out. They brought me back so I could get my friend's car, and what I saw just made me more scared. Right next to the tent was a red gas can. He could have easily just lit me on fire earlier. The finger was also gone, suggesting he had come back. The kicker is, they never caught the guy. So somewhere out there is a man sitting down to dinner, maybe alone, maybe with a wife and couple of kids, and he's missing his right pinky. Number five. My dad is a journalist and non-fiction writer, but at the time of the story, he was a reporter for the Virginian Pilot, based out of Virginia. He was working on a new book titled The Big Roads when this occurred. We often went on road trips for his research needs, and once his proposal for his new book was accepted, we went on a cross-country road trip from Virginia to California and back on old Route 66 for the book. With me being 13 at the time, I demanded he let me bring a friend along, and so we were three. The first quarter of our month-long adventure went by without a hitch. We either stayed in motels, with the occasional stay at a grand old historic hotel. My dad being the outdoors man, he decided that we should camp about five or six times throughout our trip. The first night we camped, we were in the middle of literal nowhere. No one around for at least 20 miles, on either side, in the middle of the Utah desert. When we arrived at our campsite, in our rented minivan, my dad wanted to explore a bit, because at the bottom of the hill that our campsite was situated on, was an old Pony Express stop. My friend decided to stay in the minivan, until my dad and I had finished checking out the Pony Express stop, to set up camp, on account of all the wasps and bees. We were utterly alone, and as a rather jumpy and skittish 13 year old girl, it became apparent we were isolated to the point that if anything happened, we would be screwed. That's all I could think about as my dad and I walked down the hill to explore. We checked out the old station, and everything was going smoothly, until we were about halfway back up the hill. A large truck that we had noticed driving down the old dirt road a few minutes before had turned into the campsite. We were surprised, but really didn't think anything of it. Maybe this guy was on an adventure too. The truck parked halfway up the road, and a man got out. He had what I think was a hunting rifle, and started hunting around the area my dad and I were in, about 50 feet from our campsite. Of course, this was an absolute no hunting zone, and my dad became a bit concerned, because my friend was closer to the stranger than she was to us. He yelled to the man, saying that there were children around, and that he couldn't hunt here. As soon as the man turned to face us, I got an overwhelming sense of complete doom. I felt in my entire body that something wasn't right. The man looked us over, and without saying a word, aimed his gun at us. My dad doesn't carry a gun, or knife, or any other kind of weapon. I felt trapped. My dad ushered me behind a large boulder, 
but he didn't hide. He stood his ground. There was a solid minute of this man aiming his gun at my dad, and my dad standing completely still, staring back. In my mind, I considered all of the ways this could go down. I was absolutely terrified this man would shoot my dad, and somehow my friend, and I would have to escape or get murdered during this tense minute. The guy lowered his gun, cocked his head to the side, and pointed at my dad, using fake finger guns to fake shoot him. He got in his truck and drove away. That night my friend and I slept in the minivan in the 90 degree heat, because I was positive this guy would come back and murder us all. He didn't come back, and a few other creepy incidents occurred on that trip, but we were fine and safe after all.